Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I got the updated rune and item guide for gameplaying since the crit changes. I know it's been like two patches, I'm probably a bit late and most gameplay players probably have already figured out what to use, but I will still make this video just for the general information that newer gameplay players might need. So let's get straight into it. The three runes you can use on gameplay are still the same. They are Klepto, Grasp and Fleet Futor. Now before I actually tell you what to use in these runes, let's explain first when you should use which rune since this is probably one of the most asked questions. Let's start off with Klepto. Klepto is good in lanes where you can actively proc it and be safe from your opponent. This means you won't really be killing your opponent, but at the same time, your opponent won't really be able to kill you either. This pretty much means that you get a lot of free gold and have easier scaling towards your late game. Next is Grasp. This is in lanes where there is a lot more fighting slash trading. It adds a lot of extra damage on your poke, makes you more tanky, and gives you that slight extra sustain that you need as well. Now for Fleet, Fleet is in lanes where you won't be interacting with your opponent because you know gambling is going to get outraded every time in certain matchups. The goal is with this rune to spam your Q on minions, to stay in the lane and spam your ultimate with panels of mind. But now let's get straight into the runes. Starting off with Klepto, these are the viable options in the inspiration tree. In the first row you have magical boots or stopwatch. Stopwatch is better most of the time because it doesn't deny you to be able to buy boots in the early game, which can be very useful sometimes in situations where you can dodge more skill shots, avoid ganks, and get easier in and out of your Q range to poke your enemy. Stopwatch also builds into a GA later on and gives you the option to do a flashy play for free at any point in the game. These kits are pretty much the only viable option here in the second row, gives you more sustain and adds mana to your mana pool. Then for the last row, Cosmic Insight and Time of Tonic. All you need to know is when you take which one kinda comes down to preference, but I like to say that, that I take time of tonic in a bit more difficult matchups where sustain is more needed and the extra movement speed can help me kite the enemy, while cosmic insight is just really nice to have in good matchups, obviously. Now let's talk about the possible combinations you can take with this. Sorcery is obviously still the best secondary for gameplay. I'll show you possible variations of sorcery. First off, this is probably the best variation so far. Mana flow with gathering storm. It just gives you all that you need as Gangplank. It gives you the extra mana to help you in lane and gives you the scaling AD for the late game. Now I will just show you the other variations but it pretty much comes down to whether you want like mana flow and absolute focus gives you an easier time in the lane while transcendence gathering storm is fully focused on the late game. Now this does come down to matchup and preference so I would just say try them all out and see what you like the most. For the stat runes, adaptive, defensive, defensive for standard laning phase, adaptive, adaptive defense for a little bit more aggressive laning phase, or adaptive defensive with scaling HP for a little bit of mix of everything, helps you in laning phase and gives you that extra HP for scaling. Now I will start to mention the items already, because they slightly vary from every rune setup. The core of your item builds is gonna be Triforce, Sterex, Essence Weaver and Infinity Edge. You can skip Sterex if you're super ahead or really want the damage but you'll be really squishy. Something that fixes this issue is instead of skipping it, you can build a Jarm's Fist and sit on it while you build towards your Essence Weaver. Jarm's Fist and Colvitz Wallhammer feel pretty nice. And both items build with a pickaxe, so you can always choose between going, finishing your Sterex or finishing your Essence Weaver. Both are pretty easy to build. Now, Yomus is really not needed anymore, since you don't need the CDR because Essence Weaver gives you double the CDR and the Lethality is also really not needed since crit actually does damage now. Of course, this is always welcome in your build just make sure you take Transcendence since you will overcap if you build both Yomus and Essence Weaver. Now what do you build after your core? You can either get another IE and get 75% crit chance or you can build a GA or any other situation item. Just make sure if you buy items that have cooldown reduction that you are running transcendence. Now let's go over to grasp. You can only run demolish in the first row, second wind or bone plating in the second row, second wind if opponent pokes a lot, and bone plating for all ins slash trading. Overgrowth or revitalize in the last row. I personally prefer overgrowth a lot more than revitalize since it synergizes really well with the scaling HP stat and Sterex, but revitalize feels okay as well if you need more sustain. Now secondary runes are pretty much the same. Only thing I will add here that I didn't add in the Klepto rune page is that you can go Scorch. So combos like Scorch, Mana Flow or Scorch 
absolute focus are pretty good to be a big lane bully. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. As for the items, I will mention that it's a bit more forgiving if you skip Starex with his rune setup, since the resolve tree gives you so much HP and defensive options that you can go straight for an SS Weaver if you are ahead instead of building Starex. But building Starex obviously synergizes well with the HP and is never a bad option. Same drums fist into SS Weaver strat applies here as well. Now is probably also a good time to mention Domination as a second. Now, Domination did get nerfed a while ago, which obviously makes it a lot less prioritized, especially compared to Sorcery, because Sorcery is just way better on Gangplank. But it can still be great if you need the extra sustain or long 1v1 fights. Now last, we have Fleet Footwork. As I mentioned before, this rune is only viable in lanes where there is no trading possible for Gangplank at all. Your goal is to only farm the minions with your Q, and sustain any poke your enemy will throw at you, while at the same time spamming your ultimate with presence of mind. This also means that you probably want to leave out mana flow, since you don't want to queue the enemy. So taking transcendence or absolute focus with gathering stone is probably your go-to option. Now here are the runes. So first is presence of mind as mentioned. It's just a great rune that synergizes well with gangplank. Second, either bloodline for the sustain or tenacity against heavy CC team comps, where you might want to keep your orange for more important abilities when you're at the risk of getting chain CC. Both are situational. Then in the last row, Coup de Grace, Cut Down, or Last Stand are all equally good. I guess Coup de Grace is a little better now since Gangplank actually does damage, but that's just my personal opinion. Whichever one you take comes down to preference and matchup. Core item builds stays the same. Now that was it for the new runes and item setups. I hope you find it useful, and as always, feel free to ask me anything that I could have probably missed out, or if you have any ideas for gameplay videos you want to see, let me know. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.